Okay, and in this video we want to have a look at exponential equations. So an exponential equation is one in which the unknown is in the exponent. Okay, so you know 2x plus 1 equals 5, that's what we call a linear equation because this is a linear function um, and the equation is linear. Highest power of x is 1. If we had 2x squared minus 8 equals 7, that would be a quadratic function. Highest power of x is 2. If we had, you know, 3x cubed plus 2x minus 4 equals 0, that would be a cubic function, okay? Now, an exponent, and these are all examples of polynomial um, equations. So linear equation, quadratic equation, cubic equation, we can go on. However, an exponential equation is different. It is the unknown that's in the exponent. So, for example, 2 to the power of x equals 5 would be an exponential equation where the unknown is in the exponent. Okay, so once we identify something as being an exponential equation, the unknown, the thing we're trying to solve for, is in the exponent, our first aim in trying to solve an exponential equation is to express, to try to express both sides of the equation as a single power with the same base. Okay, so if I can say that a to the power of x is the same as a to the power of y, the only way that that can possibly be true is if x is equal to y. Now I want to be clear about the fact that when we write go from this step to this step, we're not cancelling the a's. I really dislike the word cancelling. The a's aren't cancelling. You're not dividing by a. You're not, you're not doing anything in particular to get rid of the a. What you're doing is you're using your mathematical understanding of the if a to the power of x is the same as a to the power of y, the only way that that can possibly be true is if x is equal to y. So we're not cancelling anything. We are instead equating the powers. Okay, so that's our aim. Also to understand that if a to the power of x equals a to the power of y plus a to the power of z, that doesn't mean that a to the power of, um, that x equals y plus z, because that's not how index laws work. If it was times a to the power of z, yes, we well, you know index laws tell us we can multiply those two things together by adding the powers, and in that case then, yes, x will equal y plus z. But you need to focus on getting both sides of the equation as a single power with the same base, so that you can then equate the exponents, okay? All right, so if we have six to the power of x equals 216, all right, 216 is a power of six, 216 is six to the power of three. So we know that six to the power of x equals six to the power of three. The only way therefore that that is true is if x is equal to three. Okay, part b, two to the power of negative x is equal to one on 64. Okay, so two to the power of negative x. Now 64 is um, two to the power of six. Okay, so that means two to the negative x equals one on two to the six is the same as two to the negative six. And so therefore, now that we've got both sides as a single exponent with the same base, we, um, a single power with the same base, we can now equate the exponents. So negative x is equal to negative six, which means that x is equal to six. Okay. All right, three to the power of two x plus one equals 27 to the power of x. Now 27 is a power of three, so I can focus on, first of all, writing both sides of the equation as a single power with a base of three. So the left-hand side is already a single power with a base of 3. We'll leave that as it is. 27 is 3 cubed. Okay, so then we know we can multiply powers together in this situation. So this is 3 to the 2x plus 1 equals 3 to the 3x. And now that we've got a single power with the same base on each side of the equation, we can equate the exponents. So the only way that this equation is true is if 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x. I'm going to take away 2x from both sides and I get 1 equals x. So therefore x equals 1 is my solution. Okay, part d. 49 to the power of x plus 3 equals 343 to the power of x. Now both 49 and 343 are powers of 7. So I'm going to focus on writing everything as a power of 7. So 49 is 7 squared. And we've got that to the power of x plus 3. 343 is 7 cubed and we've got that to the power of x. Now, we know we can multiply powers, okay? So we're going to have seven to the power of two x plus six on the left-hand side equals seven to the power of three x on the right-hand side. And now that we have a single, ex a single power with the same base on both sides of the equation, we can equate the exponents. Two x plus six is equal to three x. Subtracting two x from both sides, six is equal to x, and so therefore x equals six. 
Okay, two more examples. Again, the aim is expressing everything with, um, as, with the same base so that we can collect everything together and have both sides of the equation as a single power with the same base. So in part E, we've got 5 to the power of 3n, 25 to the power of 1 minus 2n, and 125, and they are all powers of 5. So let's focus on writing everything with a base of 5 first. So we don't need to do anything to 5 to the power of 3n. 25 is 5 squared. We've got that to the power of 1 minus 2n. And 125 is 5 cubed. Okay, so let's multiply these powers together using that index law. So 5 to the power of 3n multiplied by, this is 5 to the power of 2 brackets 1 minus 2n, which would expand to 2 minus 4n equals 5 cubed. Now, if we're multiplying powers with the same base, which is what we're doing here on the left-hand side, we add together those powers. So this is 5 to the power of 3n plus 2 minus 4n equals 5 cubed. So that is 5 to the power of 3n minus 4n is negative n plus 2 equals 5 cubed. So now we've got a single power with the same base on each side of the equation. And so we can equate the powers and we know that negative n plus 2 is equal to 3. Let's take away 2 from both sides. Negative n equals 1. And multiply both sides by negative 1. n equals negative 1 is our solution there. And then finally, part f. Oops, sorry. We've got 2 to the power of n, of n plus 2 divided by 4 to the power of 1 minus n equals 4. So again, everything there can be written with a base of 2. I'm just going to move over here and give myself a bit more space. So the numerator is 2 to the power of n plus 2. The denominator, now 4, is 2 squared to the power of 1 minus n. And then on the right, we've got 4 to the power of 1. Sorry, 2 squared is what I want. Everything with a base of 2. Okay, we could do a number of things here, but I'm just going to focus on simplifying the left-hand side. You could, you could have multiplied that up over there, and actually probably results in a slightly easier process, but I also just want to illustrate um, an error that might happen if you do it this way, so I'm going to do it this way. So again, one, let's focus on one power after another. We multiply those together. So this is 2 to the power of n plus 2 over 2 to the power of 2 times 1 minus n is 2 minus 2n equals 2 squared. Now, when we're dividing powers with the same base, we subtract, okay, subtract the indices. So we're going to have 2 to the power of n plus 2. Now this is where you need to be careful because you're subtracting all of that power. So you do need a bracket there. You need to be careful if you just try and do it in your head without writing it out. So that is 2 to the power of n plus 2 minus 2 and plus 2n. Let me expand out that bracket. All right, so we've got 2 to the power of n plus 2n, so that's 3n uh, just 3n equals 2 to the power of 2. And so now we've got a single power with the same base on each side. We can equate the exponents and we find that 3n equals 2. And so therefore n equals 2 thirds. Now, the other thing I want to warn you of is this is our first and most straightforward method for solving exponential equations. So we just had a look at if, for example, we had 3 to the power of x equals 27. And that means that, oops, sorry. 3 to the power of x is the same as 3 cubed, and so we can equate the powers x equals 3. Now, let's think about if it was 3 to the power of x equals 26, well, 26 can't be written with a base of 3, and this method falls apart. Now, that's where we're going to need logarithms, and we'll look at those much further down the track. But for now, we're just looking at specific exponential equations that can be solved using this method of expressing both sides of the equation as a single power with the same base and then equating the powers. So it really just requires you to make use of your index laws at this point. Okay, so the practice questions here are in exercise 3i.